disclaimer. All audio and video used in the rabbit review are used under the terms of fair use in criticism and education through the form of entertainment. All audio and video used in the rabbit review are copyrighted by their respective holders. Please enjoy. Please enjoy. Hello, my fellow rabid ones, and welcome back to the Rabid Review. How you doing? Well, today, we are going to be talking about the video franchise, Kid Songs, starting with very silly songs. Without further ado, it's review time. Review power. But first, a little history. Kid Songs was created by Warner Brothers Records and Together Again Video Productions, which is now owned by Sony, whether you like it or not. Very Silly Songs was the 12th installment in a long, 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 long line of Kid Songs videos made from 1985 to 1997. The tapes were marketed as children's music video stories, which means is that there were stories behind a series of different music videos themed after many different things. Like tapes being based around animals, tapes being based around seeing the world and growing up, and tapes being based around sports and games, and etc, etc, etc. So with that being said, let's look right into this very silly VHS tape. We start this video off by showing the kids running around Fievel's Playground at Universal Studios Hollywood, or as they want to call it in this video. Silly Dillyville! Yeah, but if this kid's impressed, I'll just give him a pass for now. Oh, this place is radical! Excellent! <laughs> so these two tour guides for this video are named Silly Willy. <laughs> okay, first of all, that name. Second of all, why are you dressed like a Reject Six Doctor? And Silly Jilly, this fake doctor's fake companion for this trip. They introduce each other to every single kid by playing the... Wait, the name game? No, 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 no! I already did it once in the last review. I am not doing it again. Skip it! And a one, and a two, and a bop, bam, boo! Our fake Time Lord and companion teleport our kids without a target somehow to a bay, where they meet Billy Daffodilly, who is fishing down by the bay because he wants to get away from it, as Willie puts it. Oh, your mother and her crazy animal friends again, huh? Well, now I know why they call him Silly Willie, that old face, though! So Billy explains to the kids in song. Did you ever see a baboon holding a balloon? Down by the bay. Pretty much the rest of the songs are the pretty much the exact same thing, you know. They come up with the same exact lyrics in the beginning, and then they have an animal rhyme, and it goes on and on and on. Like a whale with a polka dot tail, a pig wearing a wig, a goat standing in a boat, and llamas wearing pajamas. Bananas in pajamas are coming down. No llamas in pajamas, you fool! This ain't the early 90s in frickin' Australia! As they bid farewell to Billy Daffodilly, they are off to Amity Island, or as they call it here... So, oh, this is downtown Silly Dillyville, where some of our funny friends live! So let's go and meet them! Yeah. What, the, what the hell was that? Was that a yes or a sneeze? Yeah, yeah. Hurt you! Thank you. Anyway, that leads into our next song, A Rigga Jig Jig. Pretty much this video is in the same vein as 12 Days of Christmas, There's a Hole in the Bottom of the Sea, and The Green Grass Girls All Around, where they keep adding new stuff to the lyrics and then going back to them. But in this case, it's a girl who can twirl, a guy with the kilt on stilts, twins who can dance that were from France, a boy with a boot playing the lute, even though the boot looks more like a fancy shoe, but I ain't judging. And a man who's old with a watch of gold. To be honest, there's nothing more to this song, but to be kind of honest, it is a little catchy. Well, it's not that bad. 
Okay, what's next on our list? We do things a little differently here in Silly Dillyville. Take our mail system, for example. Exactly. When we have a message to deliver, we send the message and the person! Okay, a little too excited there, fake Colin Baker. This song is called I'm Gonna Mail Myself to You. And as you can see, they are mailing children to people. I don't know if this would fly today. And no, you filthy millennials, it is not this or else your face would be covered in glue and you would just look like an idiot. <laughs> You see? Although I will say, some of these kids are mad needy about what they want as soon as they get delivered. Although if I was being delivered by a fake doctor and a fake companion, I would want some accommodations. Anywho, there's not much more to this particular song and video besides the weird imagery of people delivering children, and that's pretty much it. So we're just going to jump right next to the next video. Professor Quackenbush, I'd like you to meet our friends. It's absolutely a pleasure. Okay, that's it. First the fake sixth doctor, and now this guy who looks like a fake second doctor that got his information from Purple Rain! What is this, an alternate universe where this is the episode the two doctors from classic Doctor Who? Not too long ago, while on a nature walk, the most extraordinary thing happened to Professor Quackenbush. Extraordinary. Even for Silly Dilly Land. Yeah. So what the fake six and fake second doctor are talking about is the purple... And to add more humor to the fact that they are fake doctors, all the scenes with the purple people leader will be in black and white to emphasize the Doctor Who joke. Pretty much this is based on the popular song of the same name, Purple People Eater, where a guy meets a purple people eater, he gets scared, the purple people eater doesn't want to eat him, and then he finds out that he wants to be a rock and roll star, and it's pretty much all there is to the songs. Although there is one lyric that really irked me when I was younger. Do you see this fool wearing short shorts? I don't think so. Change the lyrics. Yeah, pretty much if you know this song, you pretty much know how it goes. But I would find it really funny at towards the end of the video when he rocks out in the concert if you replace the current song, Purple People Leader, with this song instead. I know he's only a kid, but that line read was really lame. Although he will end up on a better show a year later. Oh, remember, the three uh, antimatter reactors have to be gotten, and of course, the sub thing, you have to get the chest. Ready, set, go! JK, just kidding, and now back to the show. Next up, the kids meet Farmer Phil, probably the most white farmer name I can think of, who clearly, as you can tell, has so many different animals that he keeps. And he explains it in song on how he got all these animals, although this song is pretty much the same exact thing as a rig -a jig jig where they keep adding new stuff to the lyrics and they go back to it over and over and over again. And I don't want to deal with it again, so let's just skip it. And a one and a two and a pop and boo! What's that? Oh, that, uh... That's a box. Well, we can see that. Well, it's a very troublesome box. You don't want to mess with it. This is actually my favorite song from this video. It's called The Thing, and it was a song that was originally made famous by Phil Harris, who voiced Baloo in The Jungle Book. Fun fact for those. The song is pretty much about this thing that lives in a box that this guy finds, and it's a thing that nobody can get rid of because everybody hates it. Walking down the beach one bright and sunny day I saw a great big wooden box afloat in the bay I pulled it in and opened it up and 
much to my surprise. Whoa, I discovered it <laughs> right before my eyes. As you can tell in the song, they never actually reveal what's in the box, which may annoy some people, but for me, I think it's hilarious because you can just pretty much add whatever you want into the song, and it will probably make sense for anybody who really hates something. For example, conservatives, feminists, even police officers. Now I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, what's the moral of this story? Well, I'll tell you what the moral of the story is. The moral of the story is if you're out on the beach and you should see a great big box that it's within your reach, don't ever stop and open it up. That's my advice to you, cause you'll never get rid of a no matter what. So pretty much the moral is, do not find strange boxes on the beach and open them or else it'll be stuck with you for the rest of your life. And if you're the original version of this song, you will go straight to hell. I'm not even kidding. Look up the original version of this song. The guy literally goes to hell! There is another resident of Silly Dillyville that I think the kids would enjoy meeting. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Jim, Jim along, Josie! Huh, I wonder who that is. Let's just go to the next video and find out. Oh, so it's just the monkey from Dunstan checks in. And stop messing with the camera! Again with the camera, Dunstan! Yeah, so pretty much this song insists of them going like, you know, do something Jim Along Josie, and Jim Along Joe does it, and it goes on and on and on, and there's really not much more to this song besides seeing Dunstan do cutesy things. So I'm just gonna jump right into the next video because this is boring. Well, I don't see him. Me either, but I'm sure he'll be wandering by here soon. This song is called Michael Finnegan, and you've probably heard of it before if you listen to it carefully. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan, he had whiskers on his chin again. We'll move them off and move them on again, poor old Michael Finnegan begin again. Pretty much the song talks about this guy named Michael Finnegan, which pretty much bad things keep happening to him over and over again, and they sing about it. I don't know, I feel like they're kind of invading this guy's privacy right now. Man, you better not be spreading that shit that being fat is bad. And besides, it's now horizontally challenged, bitch. Pretty much by the end of this song, the guy shows up and they pretty much say how he tries to sing the song and he sings terribly. And that's pretty much the end of the song. So I'm just going to jump right to the end so we can finish this sucker already. And one, and a two, and a bop, bam, woo! day long you've been meeting silly people and silly animals and singing silly songs well now it's your turn to be silly our turn what do we have to do dance i explain yourself bruh i have my own dance and it's named after me and i'll teach it to you you know one two three it's called the silly willy if you follow along you'll be doing it before very long Okay, I really hope this song isn't a rap, and you're taking off your clothes too. I don't want to get demonetized and questioned by YouTube, so explain the song before I get into trouble. Oh, thank God, it's just a dumb song where they just do stupid moves around the entire song while the entire cast just messes around. Oh, thank God, thank God, I don't have to get questioned. Pretty much the song goes on and on as the credits roll and they do, like, stupid moves and whatever. And, you know, I can't bother too much because it is a children's song. But anyway, I'm going to tell you the funny part about this video, which actually happens during the credits. Pretty much the end credits is a long commercial for Universal Studios Hollywood back in 1990. I'm not even joking. I mean, look at this. They show off the tram tour and also show off Jaws, the Conan live show that was happening around that time. 
earthquake, that monsoon part of the tram tour, and the King Kong part of the tram tour. Now, here's an interesting fact to close on today. The director of this videotape, and all the other kids' songs tapes for that matter, is named Bruce Gowers, who also directed very famous music videos from such singers as Queen, The Rolling Stones, The Bee Gees, Elton John, Alice Cooper, and flippin' Michael Jackson? Man, this guy's been around! And he also directed episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway? An American Idol! And also directed a bunch of award shows for MTV and Nickelodeon! But the most obscure fact that I'm gonna talk about is that he also directed a few episodes of Roundhouse, which is actually one of my personal favorite 90s Nickelodeon shows from back in the day. Fight me! Well, that's all the time I have for this video today, because this video has been a pretty long video. So all I'm going to say is, stay rabid, and don't forget to say your prayers and eat your vitamins.